Alrighty guys, so recently purchased this uh, Variac off eBay and it's a three phase 8 amp, 240 volts in, 270 volts out, well 0 to 270 volts. Um, yeah, just couldn't say no really, it's just a nice three phase Variac, so you got three 8 amp Variacs all in one unit there. It's a Burko, so yeah. Um, noticed when I got it that the, uh, the brushes were on the short side, so I'd show you a trick to extending your life of your brushes a little bit more because um, they are quite expensive to get replacements for and they're a bit of a pain to um, to get hold of as well so um, I'll show you a little trick to um, extending their life a little bit more just to get a bit more use out of them so um, I've already done the front one here he's already done so that's good we've got two more over there so um, I'll just take out those little dividers there because there's 400 volts between that maybe more and it's wound up you know maybe like 500 but um, yeah, let's take out these little dividers. They're only like somewhat like paper or something like that. Dipped paper. Just take these guys out. And uh, it's obviously not easy to get in there with a screwdriver on this bit. So um, what I'll do, I'll use the, the the little spanner, quarter inch drive spanner, just to take this off here. Just pop out these brushes. It takes a little while to get to, but once you're in, you're in. That's one. Let's bend that out the way. Get the other one. A bit more. Just before I take these out, what I'll do is I'll spin the variac around to get you an angle. Show you the actual gap. It's a tiny, tiny gap, but it's not actually making contact in there because the brushes are a little bit on the short side. So if I get a light in there, somewhere behind, like that, and zoom you guys in. Oops, sorry. Might not be so easy to capture this, guys. I'll have to take my word for it. But basically. You can see light through underneath those brushes there, so that's the problem. Not quite making contact because they're too short, because they've practically practically finished. So um, I'll just continue taking those. I have to take my word for it, guys. They are a little bit shorter than than what they need to be to make contact by, like. A fraction like a hair literally just not quite making contact so just continue taking those out these burkos are nice to work on they're designed to be maintained which is good it's just a shame you can't get all the bits and pieces these days without it being a bit of a pain so if you want to get it running up and quick as soon as possible then this is an easy quick way just to get it going get the last little bit of life out of these brushes so I'll show you what I mean just now okay so that's the brush unit there taken out of the arm and if I pop the plate off there put that set that aside then you get two brushes these are two in these so that's it there's the brush holder I'll put that down there so you get two two brushes in these um they used to be called the Dura tracks, I think, or well, they, they made something called a Dura track, I think, or something like that as well. But they have two brushes to stop any um, any intermittent um, voltage drops. If you get a brush which uh, skips over a gap, hopefully the other one won't um, won't lose contact as well. So they're not putting their eggs in all one basket, if that makes any sense. But I'll show you the brushes. That's them there. If it'll just focus, yeah. So as you can see, they're practically spent they got about three or four mil on the end of actual brush it's that bit there that the narrow bit that you were looking for but because of the shoulder here it doesn't actually allow for it to push through the brush holder which is this guy here see he's got slotted holes down that end round holes down this end so when the brush goes through it only allows it to go that far which is no fun no fair so um what i'm going to do is extend that shoulder back a bit so we get a little bit more because really I want to use up the last three mil 
And then when I've got the last three mil, what I'll start doing is filing that a bit flatter there, and then I can use it right up to its uh, its stop, which is practically on that little copper stud in there. So if we just rotate to the vise. Okay, so we've got the vise set up there. So I'm just going to lock this brush in the vise now. I'll do it an easy way. Put that way around. I've already got lots of carbon over the vise from the uh, the last one I did in it from the first time. Just brush it off a bit. Right, it's got to be ever so careful when you're locking these in the vise because they uh, they are brittle and they will just break. So it's just a bit of feeling it as you uh, as you tighten it up, and when it stiffens up, that's when you want to stop. Don't go any more than that because you will crack it, and then that's the end of it. Then so um, yeah, I'm going to take it back and leave about about four or five mil on the end of it on the shoulder. That's about as far as I can go. It's about halfway in the stud, so just start off very slowly. This stuff is extremely soft, guys. So obviously. Use a um, quite a fine file to there you go. and just keep checking it for depth. And uh, obviously, you want to make sure that you're filing it flat too. So just keep filing it and checking it because it'll be surprising. I'm already halfway there. How quickly this carbon actually comes off. Just keep checking, making sure it's nice and square. nearly there. So as soon as it's flattened out with the other bit of flat there, it's about as far as I want to go. Make it square. Alright, so that's one side looking pretty good. I'll take that out. Okay guys, so that's one side done. If I can get a decent view in there. See this the shoulder now, which is on this side, the original shoulder, I brought it back to here on this side. I'm going to do the same on this side now, and bring that shoulder back, so it'll poke through the uh, the brush holder nicely. And uh, I'll leave this for now, because you want the brush to be pretty rigid still, so I'm going to leave this extra shoulder here. And when it wears down past that really narrow bit, I'll bring the really narrow bit back another three mil, and just keep doing that until it's fully worn out. So, yeah, just making the most of the uh, the remainder of the brushes on this. This will last for years for me because I'm not planning on using this very act for a while anyway. This is just a um, one for the future projects. So let's brush the rest of that carbon off. A bit more grip. Okay, that's about right. All right, start again. On um, files, guys, you find that you get a um, what they call the safety edge, which is this edge here, which doesn't have any actual um, uh, abrasive air edge to it so unlike this edge here which has the um, the filing edge on it this one won't actually proceed in the wrong direction so you don't end up cutting off your shoulder or filing off your shoulder as you're going so I use the safety edge just to keep it from going too far but I take it back a bit further anyway and then use the um, that other edge to bring it in a little bit if you know what I mean so I'll just bring that down Keep checking. A bit more. I've already done five of these today, guys, so I kind of got a feel for the um, the softness of this carbon, so you can reel these off pretty quick. It's always good to keep checking. It's not far off. Bring it square. Alright, so that looks like another one. Let's blow them off. That's the other side. There, as you can see, the both shoulders now are nice and parallel. And if I take the brush holder and poke it through, you'll find now that it will go, hopefully, if I've got the right size. Maybe not. Maybe not. Might need a bit more. Oh, there you go. It'll poke through a lot more than the original, which is this other one, which I haven't done yet. Here, which only pokes through that far. And that's it. So I'll just quickly 
file the other one down and uh, I'll show you the results afterwards guys so bear with me Perfect. Okay guys, so that's the, uh, the finished product. As you can see, both of those pop through at a nice depth now. Obviously, um, the springs will need stretching out to make them poke out a bit more, so you just literally grab it and pull it, straighten it out, pull it out, makes it a bit longer, pull it out bit by bit. These springs are actually quite wiry, so they go that's the longest spring as you can see I'll do the same for the other one stretch the spring out and when they pop back in there the spring will still be compressed just making a good contact just pop them both in there Seems to fit better the other way. There we go. So there you go, the springs the springs are still poking out. Making good contact with those guys. So um important thing to remember when doing this modification guys that when you start wearing down to where it starts to get wider again, uh, you want to take these back out and file that to the same thickness as that again, just back about three or four mil. And just keep doing that until you're about back to where you cannot make it any longer. And then you've got to go get new brushes in, really. But, but yeah, just keep in mind that you can't be putting the wide part on the variac because you'll be losing windings, which causes problems. Because these only make contact with about two or three, no, probably about two windings at once, really. No more. So just be wary of that. So it's not really designed for it to be running on the uh, on the wider part. They do make them narrow for a reason, otherwise they wouldn't be that shape. So yeah, I'll just pop this back in the very act now. I'll zoom you guys back in. Right, and the most important thing because this is for a three phase unit is to pop these cards back in because otherwise you get work potential difference literally less than 10 millimeters away from each other, which is no good. So we just pop those back a little bit of safety. It's good thinking that. So there you go, and uh, let's shift this over. Obviously, don't forget, guys, that it's quite a, um, a messy job working with carbon. So do expect to get dirty fingers, dirty hands. So there you go. That's two brushes. That's all the brushes now serviced for a little bit longer, a little bit more life on them now. So if I shine up the light behind them. Perhaps take my word for it, guys. There's no um, no light coming from behind. It's a bit of a bad, a bit of an awkward thing to do. Sorry, guys. So you go, no light. What are they listening to? Which is good. So yeah, that's it, guys. So. I hope that's useful to um, anyone out there that's looking to extend the life of their little brushes on their uh, Variax a little bit longer because there is that is a real quick and easy way to um, 
just to make those last a bit longer. So yeah, so this area could be good for another, I don't know, three or four years for me. For using it anyway, I might not even use it till then, so yeah, we shall see. Three phase, don't really have that here, but I can split it up, I can run it in parallel, I can probably run it in series, don't really want to do that, but yeah, very good. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that, guys, and um, I'll see you all again soon. And uh, Seb, if you're out there, leave a comment, dude. We'll, we're waiting for you, wherever you are. <laughs> Take it easy, dude. Alrighty, cheers, guys. Bye.